Hey everyone, this is Derek Bros of the Conscious Resistance Network, and today I just want to apologize. I just want to let you guys know I have led you astray, and before we get to that though, if you can forgive me, please bookmark theconsciousresistance.com to keep up with our latest work, our latest um, articles and videos and whatnot. Sign up for our email newsletter if you want to stay plugged into our work, and don't forget we're leaving all the mainstream corporate social media channels in favor of more decentralized uh, alternatives and if you want to get into that well you can find us on BitChute, steam it dtube uh... minds miwi and maybe some others but let me start right off and apologize and say i was wrong i was wrong there's nothing to worry about with 5g everything apparently is all good i was mistaken i should not have been going to city council for the past two months i should not have been putting out videos about 5g I shouldn't have been writing about 5G, and I definitely shouldn't have been, uh, you know, posting about it because, as you guys may know, I'm not a scientist, and surely there's no way I can understand it. I'm just a feeble-minded conspiracy theorist who can't quite get a grip on what's going on in the real world. Now, obviously, I'm being sarcastic, but based on some of the comments here and out of this video, which, by the way, thank you to everybody who shared this video. This is my first video a visit to city council back in October 10th, so two months ago, and it's just this last week went from like five or 10,000 views to 104,000, which is pretty cool. It's been bringing a lot of new people to the channel, so if you're new here, please go back and see the other videos. And also, if you only saw this video, and there's a lot of excited comments saying, oh wow, the city council actually listened, and yeah, they listened at this point, there was a couple of questions, but, and actually at this visit, you can see the city council is quite full, um, but I have gone several times since then, I've gone now four times total, we posted a new video yesterday, December 12th, I was on local Fox station, um, Isaiah Factor, uh, talking about 5G, I've confronted the mayor, I've confronted the head of the Verizon, and as I've stated, I've written several articles on this, so... Please do catch up. Um, if you're only seeing this video, you're not really getting the full picture of what's going on in Houston. And the video yesterday made it quite clear that they don't give a damn. And the mayor told me how much he loves 5G and uh, basically won't address any health concerns or privacy concerns. But as I said, apparently I don't know how to interpret science, and I'm just a you know a, a journalist who doesn't understand research and academic studies and this kind of things and so I've been told by several people here on the comments well the vast majority of them of course are very very positive comments which I'm thankful for people commenting on my ability to speak clearly and to not get emotional uh, there's of course some hate to be expected but generally though the comments are just saying you have no proof you're you don't understand I bet you're afraid of um, you know, microwaves. Well, I'm not afraid of microwaves, but yes, I don't use microwaves because standing next to a microwave could get you sick as well. And I stopped using microwaves back in 2009. That was one of the first things I woke up to when I started waking up to health. Literally, the morning I, the day I really understood it, I took the microwave out of my fridge, I walked it to the curb and left it there on the corner with a note to people saying, hey, this thing might give you cancer and make you sick. Use at your own risk. It was gone pretty quickly, but at least I made an effort to warn somebody. Um, so yeah, I don't use microwaves. And, and you know, the other thing I hear from some of these people, besides just generally saying you don't understand science, is this kind of thing like, well, everything causes cancer these days. Or I bet these are the kind of people who eat, you know, crappy food and, you know, they don't pay attention to their diet or they probably smoke cigarettes or, you know, it's just there's all these assumptions, which at the end of the day, it's it's like, why do they feel the need to attack the messenger, which in this case is me. Like, I don't take it personally, but it's it's more to me a reflection of the person like, okay, you can not believe what is being presented. You can go research it on your own and come back and attempt to debunk it, even though none of them actually do. They just claim I don't know science and that I'm stupid and, you know, poor little me, I'm just some hippie, whatever, you know, whatever kind of derogatory term. Again, tack the messenger instead of the information. But I feel like it's more a reflection of them when they say everything causes cancer and, you know, it's not a big deal. It's like, well, you're right. There are a lot of things in our world surround, uh, surrounding us that cause cancer, and that's not a good thing. So maybe we should stop doing that and um, and investigate some of those things. So that, I don't find that adequate. But I decided to respond to some of these people, and we're just going to go through a few of the studies that I've found um, from my research, looking at a couple different videos and just digging into my own research. Uh, as I mentioned, I have written several articles on this topic. They can be found on theconsciousresistance.com. Most recently, I wrote about a Connecticut senator calling on the FCC commissioner to disclose safety data for 5G networks. Of course, the head of the FCC claims that 5G is completely safe. Um, and the uh, this Connecticut senator 
Richard Blumenthal is calling on them to release that data if they have it. And this comes after the National Toxicology Program study from November where they clearly said that 2G and 3G networks are connected to cancer. Like that's without a doubt. You know, so now we're already moving, we're in 4G now, we're moving to 5G, and now here we are after people have been using cell phones for a while and we're getting some uh, admissions, uh, some research stating that like, hey, this is going to give you can the 2G and 3G can give you cancer. And there are other other studies out there, right? Of course, I found this really helpful article right here titled no, 5G is not going to microwave your brain. <laughs> you know, with a sensationalist title like that, it's got to be, it's got to be helpful, right? Um, and the person spends the most of the the article just kind of bashing anybody who could possibly think that uh, there's something wrong with with 5G or with cell phones. And of course, this is the kind of mentality I get on on YouTube. And I don't even the reason I don't spend too much time on these people is because they could just be paid trolls. They also could just be people who see, view themselves as skeptical and literally think that you know I'm just some paranoid idiot conspiracy theorist. And if I give them any of my energy, it's for you guys. It's for those who may actually be kind of reading but quietly watching. I want to make sure anybody who comes upon those conversations actually sees the evidence. But this article says, With the transition to a new networking technology, some familiar scare stories are reemerging. You might have even seen a few comments in here. 5G will give you cancer. Millimeter wave technology leads to brain tumors. And smart waves are microwaving our bodies, or so the stories go. It's all hogwash. Many of the persistent myths about cell tower radiation still hang over the industry from as far back as the 2G days. Many are wrongly concerned about the dangers, even faster 5G technology. So he goes through this and discussing ionizing versus non-ionizing radiation. And it is important if you want to understand this whole conversation, ionizing versus non-ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is the stuff that we're always told is obviously dangerous. Gamma rays, x-rays, um, you know, these medical x-rays, these kind of things that we have to wear protection and be careful to protect ourselves from. Then you have the infrared and visible light spectrum. And on this side, you have uh, you know microwaves, radio waves, extremely low frequency w waves. Uh, you have you know th some that are thermal that actually heat, and then non-thermal. And you get everything from Wi-Fi, AMF radio, or in here, cell phones, that kind of thing, right? Now, generally though, we're told that non-ionizing radi radiation is safe. Like that's just the kind of that's it. Like that's a blanket statement. It's safe. There's nothing to worry about. But as we'll show here, there are actually studies that that you know call that into question and it should be it should be discussed this article though just does a good job of it does go through some of the important studies like the national toxicology program study but of course like the um food and drug administration us fda it has already said this shouldn't be applied to humans it doesn't apply to 5g they try to dismiss the fact that the world health organization um has said that uh, cell phones are carcinogen and that recent research says that that should even be up upgraded from possibly carcinogenic to absolutely you know like, like clearly carcinogenic um, so yeah and read this article if you want because this is the person basically trying to convince you that there's nothing wrong and it's important to know what he thinks and I'll just share this one little part and it will get into the actual research that I found scare stories make for popular headlines but the reality is that small pieces of potential evidence are often quickly blown out of proportion the most popularly cited research papers on the issues have major faults and then he says numerous long-term high quality studies find no link between cell phones and cancer and he links to some of those that you can check out for yourself and it is important for us to look into the, f the funding of a lot of these studies of course from both sides and see who's funding this research and what that might mean for us. Background RF radiation levels even from today's dense LTE networks or 4G fall well below regulatory and scientifically tested safe limits. All smartphones have to prove they won't exceed these limits even in worst case scenarios before they go on sale. So basically they're just this is the kind of mentality again that I'm seeing from some of these YouTube comments. It's a blind belief in authority. It's like well the FCC has already tested this or you know the scientists of a community has already has already proven that it's safe like again you just don't understand science or just the assumption the false assumption in many cases especially if you're an educated person and if you're somebody that's not just going to dismiss the the fact the reality that governments lie as conspiracy theory because they've been shown time and time again that they test various technologies on the public and then apologize about it later now i'm not necessarily saying that's what's taking place now i know some of you believe that but i'm just saying we would be ignorant to just blindly trust and that's what this article and these people are asking us to think however he does at least admit that the u.s regulations came into effect in 1990 and a review certainly couldn't hurt as new technologies emerge no shit these these you know standards are 30 something years old and if we're going to have regulation by fcc or anybody then why not at least have it updated you know obviously i'm not like for government uh, statism but um, in this case, we might as well keep it up to date. 
And he says, I want to end by saying none of this means research into the possible effects of radio frequency radiation or RFR isn't important or should be outright ignored. We can always stand to learn more, like how cell phone radiation affects fertility or if there are elevated risks for children. If there are unknown risks, we certainly want to know about them. So it's like he spends the whole article talking shit and just basically telling people you're crazy, it's hogwash if you think these kind of things. And then at the end, the last paragraph, he says, well, you know, we should definitely probably look in if this is going to cause problems for fertility and kids and maybe unknown risks. Uh, you know, we should probably learn about them. However, as the evidence currently stands, according to this writer, there is no compelling uh, evidence stating smartphones or their associated radio signals are unsafe for public use. So let's take a look at that claim by uh, Robert Triggs of AndroidAuthority.com. Let's take a look at some of these studies I found, just a few of them, and these are all not specific to cell phones. That's what's important, my friends, to understand is you got to understand the and I'm still just beginning to understand, so I'm not sitting here talking to you guys like an expert by any means. But it's important for those of us who are concerned with the health aspect of 5G because those of you who've heard me talk, I'm not just focusing on the health aspect because the truth of the matter is some people will reject anything I say because I'm not a scientist. You know, I'm not a, a doctor, that kind of thing, and, and they'll do the same thing to you. And I, I've learned that over the years from working on other issues. Um, but outside of that, it is important for us to be able to back up the things we're saying, you know, because the health side is important, but I also take concerns about privacy and security and surveillance, right? I think those are big concerns. So if people don't want to listen to you about health and you've wasted your breath, then maybe shift to getting them to understand the surveillance and privacy concerns. And if they don't care about that, maybe talk to them about the philosophical aspect of self-ownership, that if you own yourself, but you have no say in whether or not you're subjected to these frequencies, which may cause harm, according to lots of studies, um, and other studies that say they don't cause harm, so we really don't know, which may cause harm, then, you know, that's an attack on your sovereignty as a free human being. And now none of these arguments work on it, on these people. If the health doesn't concern them, the surveillance, privacy, you know, their own self-ownership, then my guess is nothing will affect them, and don't waste your breath. This is from the Journal of Chemical of Neuroanatomy. Microfrequency electromagnetic fields, EMFs, produce widespread neuropsychiatric effects, including depression. I'm not going to read through every single one of these, but the ones that I'm choosing, the ones I'm reading to you, are ones that I've already read through myself and that I think definitely you should, you should look at the conclusions. At least look through these abstracts and kind of come to the look at their final conclusions, and it's clear um, what they're pointing at. This is from uh, PubMed. It says, use of laptop computers connected to internet through Wi-Fi decreases human sperm motility and increases sperm DNA fragmentation. Um, and this one says, international national expert group evaluations, biological health effects of radio frequency fields. This paper, and basically it says that this paper is a compilation of all the various uh, research over the years. Um, on the biological effects of RF exposures from various national and international groups. In general, the expert group suggested a re reduction in exposure levels, a precautionary approach, and further research. So at minimum, they're saying, like, reduce your exposure levels and be precaution, like, take precautions and further research. So even that alone, if that was mainstream news and that was reported on, like, hey, we are going to, you know, the National Health Association or whatever various bureaucracies and different agencies of governments around the world, if they came out and said, we are going to pass a law now that, like, mandates, or, you know, obviously people would violate this law because they're addicted to technology. But if they said, hey, we are now, this is the new policy, we recommend six hours or less a day around computers and cell phones, like, that would be a cause for alarm and their buddies in the telecom industry would stand to lose a lot of money so i mean i'm not trying to get too off track because we're looking at the scientific data here but again my friends who are you know just stuck in evaluating the scientific studies without also understanding the other conditions including the fact that the wireless telecom industry is so t uh, closely tied to the u.s government and the fcc they just like with monsanto and other industries they have a revolving door they go in and out of the industry and, and into the fcc and other agencies where they can affect policy so without considering those things you're really not understanding the full scope of the situation like you can just say well i'm just going to stick to the science but the science can be manipulated the science can be bought off the science can be um, you know it, it, it can just it's like any other industry anybody can get money injected and then it can be less than reliable um, we picked up some unusual traffic from your network and have temporarily blocked access from your IP address well that was a study I was looking at hold on it's probably because my um, my VPN one second all right, here we go. So this one is electromagnetic fields and DNA damage from the journal pathophysiology. And again, 
go through the study, see what they have to say, read their conclusions. I don't want to spend too much time looking at this, but the reason I'm showing these is because the conclusions are on, you know, in the area of pointing at problems, DNA damage of electromagnetic fields, EMRs, electromagnetic radiation, radio frequency radiation. Like these are all connected to the same type of spectrum, the same type of uh, frequencies that are being put out by cell phones and being put out by Wi-Fi and the problem with 5G is we will have an increase in this infrastructure in small cells everywhere And yes, some people are already saying hey dude micro cells are already all over the place small cells are all over the place Okay, I never said the technology wasn't or that the the equipment wasn't in Fully in place in some places, but you're not understanding 5G if you think that everything's already in place No, that's why they're spending billions of dollars to install new infrastructure, but without a doubt. I'm sure they've been uh, installing these devices covertly and maybe publicly for other reasons um, all over the place already. Effects of low intensity radio frequency magnetic uh, electromagnetic fields on electrical activity and rat hippocamel slices. Now this is talking about studying rat brains and like injecting them uh, with or you know sending radio frequencies into their brain and seeing how it affects. And just the kind of final conclusion here it says. Um, the results suggest that low intensity radio frequency fields can modulate the excitability of hippocampal tissue in vitro in the absence of gross thermal effects. This change, these changes in excitability may be consistent with reported behavioral effects of radio frequency fields. So they're creating excitability in the hippocampus of the rat brain. What is that going to do? How can that, you know, what could that lead to? We know the government has tested how to uh, manipulate various areas of the brain under MK Ultra and things like that. We know that, I mean, just as last week it was reported that they were doing studies like that in the 60s on trying to remotely control dogs and, uh, and pets with uh, electrodes to the brain. Uh, so these kinds of things do have an effect on our brain, and radio frequency fields apparently are creating excitability in the brains of rats. So what can that do to us if we're surrounded by them? Extremely low frequency electromagnetic fields cause DNA strand breaks in normal cells. The title explains it, but it's still worth your time to read the whole thing. This one is a little different as far as health, but it's, I think, equally interesting. The suicidal feelings, self-injury, and mobile phone use after lights out in adolescence. And it basically says that sleep length was significantly associated with mobile phone use in only in early adolescence. Uh, logistic regression showed significant associations of the nocturnal mobile phone use with poor mental health, suicidal feelings, and self-injury after controlling for sleep length and other confounders. Conclusions, mobile phone use after lights out may be associated with poor mental health, suicidal feelings, and self-injury in both early and late adolescence. Obviously, the, these kinds of things need to be researched more, but this is just showing you some of the, you know, in various fields, this is not just one field that's looking into this. Now, this document here was put together by a group that I think is, is you know, concerned about cell phones. It says, newsletter of the cell cellular phone task force. But what I'm pointing out here, basically, is this is a pretty good study that lists... Um, it says, influence of high-frequency electromagnetic radiation at non-thermal intensities on the human body. A review of work by Russian and Ukrainian researchers. And it's essentially what it is. And again, it's important to step out of the box of the United States and U.S. scientists and see what other researchers are saying. And so this does a good job of that. And, you know, it's a pretty long document. But for those who have the time, somebody has already highlighted some of these this document previously. And it does show that there are there are aspects of EMR radio frequency that are creating changes within the body, without a doubt. And that's just, I think this is a non-controversial fact. So the, the problem is people think that the frequency that 5G is operating on has already been shown to be non, you know, non-cancerous. Uh, it doesn't have any effects. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that it's only about cancers. Yes, I've said a couple times, I even said at city council, like, hey, if people get cancers, like, you guys are going to be held responsible. But we don't know 100% certain if that's where it's going to lead. It does seem to be potential, you know, potentially, yes, we, you know, we can point in that direction. But without a doubt, headaches, dizziness, lack of sleep, all kinds of other health problems exist and might pop up. So it's important for us to study this instead of blindly dismissing this. So I'm sorry, YouTube commenters, you have not convinced me to slow down my fight against 5G in Houston. And just to be clear, I'm not fighting for a ban on 5G necessarily. I um, am trying to take this, uh, take a mainstream approach. So if my friends out there who already know about things like 
uh, solar geoengineering, who already know about things like HARP, who already know about attempts at mind control and things like that. When you come onto these comments and you, you talk to the normies and the, the mainstreamers, for lack of a better term, and you start out with saying, 5G is a mind control program, or they're trying to microwave us, or they're trying to blast our brains, or whatever these kinds of things, which may or may not be true. And look, if you know my work, you know I do some deep research, and I definitely believe that the motives behind these things are not friendly, and it's not just about giving us quick speed to technology. But sometimes we don't have the factual evidence, the documentation to 100% back up our claims. We can point to, well, look at this. Hey, they said this, and what about this document? But again, the normie, the mainstreamer is just going to be like, okay, this is just a, a conspiracy theory. This is a paranoid person. Like, I shouldn't listen to them. And everybody's free to take their own approach. But this is why when I come to these kind of council events or I'm talking to people, I don't start out immediately by saying, hey, I think they're blasting our brains with this stuff and this is population control or, you know, things like that. Take your own approach if you want. But I also think that if we maybe make sure to couch our arguments in facts, which because we have the facts, then we do ourselves uh, a better, you know, we, we help out the, the whole fight against 5G and raising awareness. And at the least, perhaps through those efforts, we could potentially get the city of Houston to, you know, admit that they haven't studied this. Even if they admit that, I think I could turn that into a headache for the mayor. That's what I'm trying to do is use my journalism and activism to, to push this issue. I could make it a headache for the mayor if he admits that they haven't studied it. And that's why he just is remaining quiet. Also because the CTIA, which is the Cellular Telephone and Internet Association, which is like the wireless telecom um, lobbying group, gave the mayor the 5G Wireless Champion Award. So he's... He's a part of their industry, and so I don't expect anything from him. But my point is, if we're going to have any effect, instead of just blindly laying down and accepting this, then we need to be able to debate this and argue this and point to the facts, not just go with the emotion and with the assumptions. So that's what I got to say. Again, please bookmark theconsciousresistance.com. Thank you guys for listening to me rant about this. I hope that it's been educational, and let me know what research you have out there. Remember, you are powerful, you are beautiful, you are free. Peace.